You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, presented by the Nation Network. Thinking back to the latest nights, we would talk of a better life. Jared, what do we got going on today? Got to Leave This Town by an artist named Laurel, local girl. Works at the pint with Rick every now and then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Laurel, Leave This Town. Yeah, great tune. I like this. What do you guys think? You into it? Yeah, I feel bad for everyone in the room who doesn't have headphones on and can't listen to this. We just kind of got a little slow <laughs> like jam going week on here. By week, yeah. You guys don't know where we're dancing, but we are. Start off with a nice little tune from Laurel, and then we're going to turn dark here right away. <laughs> Edmonton Oilers, the CEO, Bob Nicholson, and vice chair of something, something. Well, he kicked a hornet's nest yesterday. I don't know if you guys heard. I don't know if you guys have been living, if you've been under a rock. Check the internet, the tweets. Bob Nicholson pissed off the world yesterday when he was at a season ticket holder meeting and essentially threw, well, not essentially, he literally threw Tobias Reader under the bus, Picked backed him it over physically, him. physically, threw him under the bus. It was, it was He's now on shocking. the injured reserve. Cameron, you wrote about this. This article that you had was trending on Google. It was trending on Twitter, Facebook. It erupted. So if you don't know what we're talking about, Bob Nicholson, as I said, shat upon Tobias Reader for literally no reason. It was, I, I assume somebody asked him a question about Reader and he decided to take his shot. Sometimes you got to shoot your shot. Here's what he said. And then we're going to get some reactions here. We've got a packed house today. To my left, we've got Dan, Chris, Cam's here. Jay the Squire is here. He wants to get in on it. Rick's behind me. Jared's beside me. Evan's here. We've got a packed house. We found Evan. We found Evan. He made it back from Vegas alive. We're going to get to that in a minute. Back to Bobby. He said, Toby Reader will not be signed by the Edmonton Oilers at the end of the year. Weird for a CEO to say, but we'll get there. Toby Reader was a player that other teams wanted. He came here for one year because he wanted to play with Leon Dreisaitl, who he plays with on the German national team. He thought if he wasn't playing with Leon, he'd be playing with Connor. He'd score 15, 16 goals, and instead of making $2 million, he'd sign a four-year deal ex- four-year extension at three and a half million. Toby Reader hasn't even scored a goal. Toby Reader has missed so many breakaways. If Toby Reader had scored 10 or 12 goals, we would probably be in the playoffs. I don't know if you guys know who Tobias Reader is, but he played on the fourth line last night. Yet he is the one that was blamed specifically for the Oilers being where they're at. Let's go around the horn. Everybody looks a little bit miffed by the comments. Jay is, uh, I can see the steam coming out of his ears right now. The rage is building. Cam, you wrote about it. What do you think? I had a lot to say about this. There was so much to unpack about these absolutely asinine, wildly inaccurate statements that Bob Nicholson made. What? On one hand, it's bothersome that somebody in his position would come out and just publicly urinate on a player like that because it's disrespectful and it makes the organization look even more inept than it already is publicly. And then also, it goes to show how completely lost that guy is. If he thinks the difference between the Edmonton Oilers making and missing the playoffs is 15 goals, he is so far in the dark, there is no coming back. Perhaps you others are so lost that they could use a GPS system from our friends at Sherwood Ford the Giant. If you're on the Twitter machine, go ahead and follow Sherwood Ford at Sherwood Ford. If you're on Instagram, follow them at Sherwood Ford underscore the Giant. They are fine folks there. They are doing all the car things you need service wise, sales wise, just just, producing good content. GPS pull that you. uh... Well, and I'm going to jump in on the GPS poll because as the proud driver of the nation truck, I have not been lost in Edmonton for the seven months I've been driving this thing. So That's what I'm saying. Very accurate. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Go follow Sherwood Ford on their social media. Again, on Twitter, it's at Sherwood Ford. On Instagram, it's at Sherwood Ford underscore the giant. Go see them in Sherwood Park. Get yourself a new vehicle. Maybe an impulse buy, Jay. Head on out there. Grab yourself a new F-150. Maybe an F-350 if you're feeling bold. Load it up. Load it up. We got a lot of shit in this town we're carrying right now because of this this interesting, interesting organization. Back to Bobby Nix. Jay, you've been fired up about this for over 24 hours. What do you think? 
Well, to jump on Coombs, I don't know if I'm talking too loud, Jerry, because I don't have the earphones on. Um, I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, to jump on Coombs' statement, this guy is a professional CEO, like high level business executive. And he goes to his customers, the season ticket holders. And I don't care if he was hot and, and snapped and said this, but how does he not have, like, what is the underlying thought? Like, how does he, how does he go out and maim someone like he did with Tobias reader? Like, he goes out and says that, you know, the team was run by Peter. It's not run by committee. And then he goes out and opens up by saying, we're not going to be resigning him. You know, what, 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 what kind of logic? He's throwing us around. You know, it's the water. It's, it was Pete's fault. No, it was us that did the decision. Oh, no, this, that. The confusion that's coming out of this guy. But the fact that he cracks under pressure as a professional executive like that and says something so childish. Well, and it wasn't even, it's not even that it was one thing. He kept harping on He was beating him. Like, is that we're, what, we're, what, so what is his underlying thought for him to go on a rant like that is what I want to know. Like, what, what I, I would really want to know what's going on in his head. Well, I think most people are going to sit there and go, you expected a lot more out of him. And I agree. There are 12 there, more goals, 16 more goals, 20 more goals. There is isn't a gonna polished change. executive way to say that. And like, I, and we I agree expected with you. more out of Tobias Reader when we signed him this year. Yep. We know he's put out a good effort. Yep. And like, leave it at that. We don't all, fucking pull out his stat sheet and then blame wins. him for why we didn't make the playoffs. We all know the Oilers aren't signing Tobias Reeder next year, but he didn't have to tell everybody it. Well, yeah, you never play like <laughs> it, it, it. We just like sullied the like the name of the organization. Like, you think free agents are going to want to come here and well, take what, a try? What GM now is going to want to come into this role? Every GM is going to want to come. Every GM is going to want to come everybody, here and be like, everybody. oh, Bob Nicholson's already made a decision for me. I can't now sign this player that it's I could be, maybe it's sign. It's Tobias Ryder, though. It's not even a big decision. How How is every GM going to want to come into this team if his boss is a guy who's going to maim one of his players? Well, there is there is no GM here right now. So that's probably something that you wouldn't have said or at least left it up to the GM to say, had we had one here right now? I think... Everybody's gonna the GM lineup is gonna be massive. I can't remember somebody said the other day it's gonna be four thousand. There's gonna be a ton of people trying to get this job. There are so many reasons to get that job. Um, Dallas's owners or whatever the hell those guys were tore into their best players, not a fucking bottom line guy. That's different. That's different because you're not beating up on the little guy. You're you're calling out your star player, a guy you're paying ten million dollars to. And, and, and yeah, what do I agree fully with how we approach it? No, but I don't mind someone calling out the guy he's paying $10 million a season to if you're that sh- he's not performing. The guy that you're paying $2 million on just a one year, like, like taking a gamble and he's underperforming and that's the fucking reason. Well, okay, so first of all, he should not be number one on this list. There's probably nine other people. And I agree with you there. I agree with you there. There's definitely nine other topics you can point at first, but if you're going to take a shit on a player, I'd much rather be a guy on his way out. Who is a low level guy than trying to piss off your, your, your upper echelon guys. Cause that's, you don't want to. You don't want to piss off your Sagans, your Bens, your 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 Connors, and your Leons. If you're gonna shit on somebody, shit on a low level guy. The best part about this whole thing is Bob Nicholson started digging his hole like a couple months ago with the blame the water quote, and then at the beginning of the week at the at uh, the season's ticket holder uh, a conference, he started talking about how their goal is to get a top two defenseman, and then we all know that so- someone yelled out, "Well, that was what the Adam Larson trade was supposed to be for." And then, and then, obviously, yesterday he drops the Toby Reader thing. Like this guy should not have a mic in his hands ever. He shouldn't be speaking to the public. My, uh, fa- I think my favorite part about this whole thing right now. <laughs> I think my whole my favorite part about this whole thing right now is watching Jared work the dials, controlling the levels on Jay and Rick going back and forth. What I don't understand is why does the CEO of the OEG feel the need to say we're not signing anybody? The only way that makes sense is if he already knows Keith Gretzky is the GM. And why else would they, why else would he say it? Otherwise, there's no way he could know that they're not going to sign Tobias Reader. Another thing that came out last night, uh, a personal friend of mine, Ryan Rashog, tweeted out, Reader's agent, Darren Ferris, said, I am totally an as- astonished and disappointed that the president of an NHL team can make such a callous and reckless statement about a player. This is completely unacceptable. I agree. That's, I agree. That's so accurate. Because there's a couple of things here too. There's there's many layers to this onion. He goes out and says that at a season ticket holder event where there's 
a room full of people with fucking computers in their hand. Instantly, these tweets go out. Twitter starts erupting. By the way, the blame Toby hashtag, so good. Oh, Canada wide. It was fantastic. The blame Toby hashtag, if you want to dive into that, spend a little, take a little dip in late Chris today. Check out all those things that Toby's to blame for. But what about the dressing room? We talk about character at this fucking team all the time. How do you find character if you have none? If you're the CEO of the a $500 million company and you're th- taking shots at one specific guy, what if Lucic had another 16 goals? Does he count? What about the fact that Ryan Strom has 14 in New York or Drake Kajula has 11 in Chicago? Seems to me that's 25 goals. I would have made up for that loss. I think we found where our character issues stem from. It doesn't top. make any sense that they keep talking about character when this is the kind of bullshit that they're going to say in public in front of a room full of people. You want to know what Oilers fans thought about it? The Oilers Twitter account tweeted out a little snippet of one of the season ticket holder meetings on their Twitter. The responses are sensational. People are so mad, just completely shocked. But at the same point, why would we be? I think Wanya had a great tweet last night during the game that if Rogers plays got struck by a meteor, he wouldn't be surprised anymore. It's just how many ways can this team find to shoot themselves in the foot? How can you have the guy who's ahead of your company taking shots at people? He's tarnishing the crest that we are so loyal to. Like, he is, he is, he is the front-facing thing. He is the boss of that crest, the Oilers logo that we love and cherish so much. And he is devaluing it to the entire world. If you listen to sports media t- for the next two days, it's just going to be talking about how fucking dumb it is in Edmonton. Yes, it was a dumb thing to say, but I'm almost guarantee you that Glenn Sather leveled players way harder that were way better back in the 80s. Fine, I think we're doors. getting we're getting a little we're getting a little like we're getting a little soft these days. Okay, yes, he should not have said it. I'm the all way. about calling out players. I know this. Is I why, love this about is calling out players, little, but like there's 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 a way to do it, and you call out the right fucking player. You still maybe call, say you're fuck still Koskinen. Guys it might have been goals. a mistake. That would not. I'd you're take still that calling over. out a guy with zero goals, two million dollars for zero goals, and I agree with you. There are seventeen other fucking things to point at first, but he's not wrong with what he said, except for the fact that twelve goals would get us in the playoffs. Two million dollars. We expected a lot more out of him. He probably expected a lot more of himself too. And I'm not sitting here trying to fucking back Nicholson. I'm just trying to calm people down because. Twitter's turned into like we take one thing and it's a fucking dog pile all of a sudden. But they're not Twitter isn't wrong in this. And they get blown out of proportion. Nope, but it gets blown out of proportion. Now I know those tweets that Bag Milk just read, those those quotes. I want to know did he just did he just rifle those off one by one without saying anything? Were there people talking to him? What were the what was the context behind this? Everybody started fucking losing their mind yesterday, and I went, okay, you know what? I'm not saying a damn thing until I get some context or hear with my own ears. And then, of course, the transcripts came out. But still, there's got to be something else in the middle there. Because I, he didn't just come out and say, read those 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 quotes yeah. in, in, in a row. That's and what just I know, the off. why. Why why are you saying that? Why got, are you saying that publicly? What, would, had, what like, is motivating you he's to want to go and just, just berate a player? He was on his fifth. He was on his. Oh. He was on his fifth. He was on his fifth meeting with with uh, with season ticket holders, and I guarantee you that's gotta be horrible. Exactly. And I don't feel sorry for him at I, all. I don't disagree. And I don't feel sorry at all. However, by the fifth one, yeah, he got a little defensive. He came out and he fought back a little bit, and he took down a guy who's been definitely a bit of a flat tire for us when you expected more out of him. Not, I don't know what, what he expected out of him. Even twelve more goals ain't gonna change shit. But, but you're just, yeah, he, he he took fucking five days worth of uh, fucking shit and coughed back a little bit and never should have. If that's the guy that's in charge of this, I want somebody who fucking can take that and walk away and you can go punch a punchy bag in the back room afterwards. But in front of the cameras, in front of the season ticket holders, in front of fucking everybody, Childish. you got to be fucking much more professional than that. It's but that's, 
Okay, that's Dan, the Dan, point. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's the point though. Is that we're getting we're getting a peek behind the curtain, and the scary thing is, is that the organization is pointing at the Tobias readers of the of the world <laughs> as the issue to be the uh, as the issue as to why we're not in the playoffs and why we're not successful. They're not looking at themselves. They're not looking at the choices that they've made. They're they're pointing at a guy that is making two million dollars that is on a value contract. He's 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 nothing, and he's going out the door. It's just nonsense. But. We're talking about a series of gigantic mistakes. There is no that talk he about- is then going customer facing and saying, "No, it's this one, not everything that happened up until this point." He is anchoring it all in this one thing. I'm all about calling out players, but to sit in front of season ticket holders who are paying the freight for this team and to go out and childishly accuse one of the smaller players. In the organ, play. They're supposed to play a minor role and shit on them. It's it's a bad look. In a bigger, and that's what like to Dan's point. That's scary. What is actually going on in the organization for them to think that is the case? The the to me the bigger picture is about a team that talks about character and culture over and over and over again. What do you think this did in the dressing room yesterday? Are you telling me that, oh, well, Bobby said that he apologized and me and Toby had a good laugh about it? No, he didn't. Man. There's no way Reed is laughing about it. There's well, that's no a, way. Yeah. There's no way he's laughing about it because why would his agent come out and say, oh, obviously the agent has to come out and say it. But like, what does Connor say to Toby then? Hey, man. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, our sorry that our boss's boss took a shit on you for absolutely no reason. I mean, I'm all for pl- calling players out too. Do it in the room. That's the coach's job. You employ a coach to motivate players and to crap on players and to praise players and you do it behind the doors. Honestly, the only like the there's a positive in this and that's that the boys will probably rally together around Toby and honestly it's probably going to bring them closer together. If 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 they're not every player in that room isn't trying their damn hardest to get that guy his goal, then fuck all those players, man. Like if you're not like telling that guy to go to the net and like you're throwing it at his ass to get it in the net, then like what the fuck? Another problem I have is I don't think Bob Nicholson understands how goal differentials work. <laughs> Let's say the Oilers right now have a negative 35 goal differential. Let's say Toby had 16 goals. They'd still be down 19. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Learn stats. Don't make yourself look like an asshole. Don't criticize players in front of a room full of people. It's pretty simple. If you want to criticize Tobias Reader, call a team meeting. Go down there and do it. I like yesterday after the comments, Kat Silverman posted the video of Toby Reader scoring two shorthanded goals back to back in like 20 seconds against the Oilers. A few when was ago. that? Like four years ago? Yeah. But I mean, still, it's like this. Is the it was two years ago. He's on two bad years <laughs> in a row. And that's fine. You know what? Should he have said we're not bringing him back? Probably not. But at the same time, that doesn't fucking bother me that much. And I think it's we're bringing out some tinfoil hats if we think that means Keith's in charge now. It's already over. Keith's already in charge. There's no fucking way they just give it to Keith. Does Keith deserve a fucking interview? Yes. Go look at everybody in white collars and around the league. They agree with us. They were, Sorry, they agree with me. They know a hell of a lot more about what goes, what goes on behind the scenes in teams, especially ours, than we do. We sit here and think... We sit here and see from our perspective, and we don't see shit. We see 2% of what actually fucking happens out there. But it's probably peaks, a good thing. It's the peaks behind the curtain that we're getting from the organization now that are that are terrifying. He's Bob Nicholson in the last like three weeks has admitted that they didn't interview anybody before they hired Peter Shirelli. They don't use analytics anymore on the te- in the team. They, you know, and the, and now he's dumping on a player that's making $2 million. Like it's just, it's, you're right. We don't see the full picture, but the bit of the picture that we're seeing is an absolute dumpster fire. And the Oilers have also come nowhere near earning our benefit of the doubt. Like, come on. This is no. this is not the first PR mishap. Like with the Dallas Stars thing, when Jim Lights came out and he shit all over Radulov and Ben and Sagan, it was like, when was the last time you heard about the Dallas Stars having a PR thing? Like, okay, but is, that's the, the Dallas has one Stars. Of these every on, single because, year. Because we're on a bigger scale because we're in Canada. And I mean, and he justifiably got spanked for it. The NHLPA and came out and they were like, what the fuck, man? Like he got hit for it. And it's like, are we validating this happening because the Dallas Stars also did it? 
So because of what he, th- if we just look at the exact words we use, are we feeling that bad for a guy who's making two million dollars playing fucking hockey? I honestly hockey? couldn't even care less about Toby Reader. It doesn't matter. I don't care about his feelings. Then why the I fuck care is mainly, everyone sitting going? I care I hope mainly. Every shot goes off his ass. Everybody should be trying to get him his goddamn goal. Yeah, but the point is, is that we have someone who's wildly incompetent running the organization. He he sat there and fucking shit the bed when he was getting everybody fucking firing on him. I almost guarantee you if. If all all of us sat here sat through what he had to go through for five days in a row, and I'm not again, I'm not backing him up. I'm just trying to explain you things. You are fucking backing him up, sir. I I have sat there as in my job. You enjoy I a Bobby Nix burger at the game. I would maybe. Yeah. I've never had one though. Um, I don't have well, that I kind of money. Come on now, <laughs> except for when I hit the crafts table. <laughs> I've sat there and I've had customers berate me and go off and you're like, okay, you try and go with them. You try and understand, 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 understand. They don't stop. They don't stop. They don't stop. And then fucking at the end, I just, I cut it off. I say, you know what? Stop pointing your finger. Stop yelling. Stop doing this. And I say that. And I shut it down. And I agree with you. And I agree with you. And I agree with you. And I don't think he should have said what he said. However, at the end of the day, I don't think it's because he's incompetent. I don't think it's because he's an idiot. I think that he just got overwhelmed and he got emotional and he fucking spouted off and said things he shouldn't. The reason that you but still like, have your job, Rick, is because you can handle it day after day. Whereas Bobby Nix just proved that five days is too much for him to answer questions. No, to that's the, five the, days. Of why just why, is, getting why is that the shot, shot you take? I would be like, it was just the one. It was the it was the it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, it was the last like, one that got you. Say anything else. And I agree with you. What he say said we're was not wrong. happy with Toby Reader. I yeah, I honestly say for me, they were the disappointed with how his performance this year. Watching Don't every- fucking walk up and down him and watching, then blame him for not being listen in the playoffs. to everything he said so far. And he keeps putting his fucking yeah. foot in his mouth every single time. They say this, they get shit on, they say this, they get shit on, they start going back, backtracking, saying the exact opposite. Yeah. They've been honestly, these things have been horrible. They need to come out with an apology. Listen, everybody, I'm apology sorry. Apology is worth we, absolute. They no, have I, no fucking currency with the fans right now. Th- that I think, policy is worth fucking shit. I think this would get you a lot more respect from the from everybody if you just came out and said, you know what? We apologize. We screwed up. We have not taken the team down the down the road we want to. Yeah, okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go dark till draft day. We're going to fucking fix some shit. We're going to fix mm. this, this, and this. We're going to get us back on the road. So and what we're you're talking about is back. transparency, something they never fucking give us. But that, That's exactly what we deserve. No, I just fed you a, a spoonful of what you want to hear, though. But fucking, t- but whether be you, honest whether about I it. Whether I believe it or not, I don't know if I even believe that. Like, I'm they're better to go dark than to go to fucking sit I'm on like, fucking Toby. Anyways, I want, you're, you're talking about Nicholson feeling fatigue of taking arrows for five days that's so with fans. Go watch. Not fatigue. Just, go watch Sunderland Till I Die on Netflix. You'll see oh yeah. some similarities between them and the Oilers in the sense of a team that was awesome in the 80s and 90s. Now have a new owner, new leadership. And now the club is failing. So and 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 this 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 and this team means everything to the city. Does any of this ring a bell? Go watch that because their GM frequently will go in front of their supporters because they put their supporters above all, and they will sit there and he will fucking take arrow after arrow after you're watching it and it's uncomfortable. But you're like, I respect that he's doing it. And he's saying like what they're trying to do and he's being very open and honest and he's not, he never called it one of his players and they showed many of these instances. And just so you know, drunk soccer fans are probably more aggressive than Canadians at a season ticket holder event. Like this guy is catching arrows and he doesn't break. Why can't, why can't our high press priced executive not take the right route in communicating things and protecting the brand value. The brand has been damaged by this. I agree. All I know for sure, gentlemen, is that this situation stinks. <laughs> Which reminds me of our friends at the Pog Deodorizer. What you need to do is you need to head on over to thepogstore.com. Grab yourself either a mobile unit, a wall unit, and kill 98% of household odors caused by bacteria and fungus. Maybe, maybe, what the Oilers need so desperately is a little bit of ozone spread through the area. Clean things Plug up. in rogue style. It freshens and purifies the air naturally using the power of nature. It eliminates odors without the use of dangerous chemicals. Freshen your life. Head on over to the pogstore.com. Grab yourself a puck. 
Well done, bag milk. Thank you. Do you like that one? That I've good. been sitting on that for like three, <laughs> <Yes>. four minutes. <laughs> what I think that the bigger point for me, at least, it, and I'm with Cam, is it doesn't matter that it was Toby Reader. At the, at the end of the day, that's inconsequential. At the end of the day, to me, the fact that it was him and not Colby Cave or fucking, you know, Ty Ratty. Kevin Gravel. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, it, whoever it is is inconsequential. The fact that the CEO said that in front of a group of paying customers. And then another thing, too, is, and Jay touched on this, this wasn't just an off-the-cuff comment. No. He dressed Reader down. They've no. been thinking about this. He woke up in a cold sweat multiple times and put these thoughts together. This is not, this is not improv. That was the first bullet out of his chamber, exactly. is, what's, is what's scary. This isn't just random stuff. This isn't just random stuff off the top of his According head. to Bruce McCurdy's recap, this was a fluid conversation where he was riffing. So I don't know if there was more questions inside. I don't know if there was more uh, questions coming in. All I know is that for a CEO, this is a real bad look. And I would love to know what was going on in the Oilers' office after this came out and the reaction started flooding in? Because they had to smoke bomb their way out of there, try and figure out what to do, release a statement. They had John Shannon on the intermission, Doing basically PR. with tears running down his eyes, begging for forgiveness for Bob Nicholson, just like he told fans, don't be mean to Peter Shirelli. Give me a break, man. Give me a break. This whole thing is just bananas it's like it's like the ottawa senators will do something so ridiculous and the Oilers are like huh you think you're gonna get away with this we'll show you we want to get right in on this it's like yesterday in ottawa dan pull, pulled this up uh eugene melnick had himself a day in ottawa yesterday yeah. where he's saying uh if you criticize the senators you're not a real fan you sound like a 12 year old from toronto and then he took shots at ian mendez yeah he, he straight up told ian mendez that he's bush league and and every every reporter from across the networks came in and defended him. Melnick's guys. also got literally paying money to have Twitter bots on Twitter with weird accounts, Kevin seven five two nine three eight six, saying shit like, "I'm happy with our owner. He's the reason the team's still here. I'm a real Sens fan. Go cheer for the Leafs if you don't like it." And these are everywhere. But it's like a dunk off between the Senators and the Oilers right now. Who Break. can who can do the worst? Bringing it back to Nicholson, it's like I know he's got two more of these season ticket holder meetings today. Like, how are those going to go? That's what I was. I was just going to say we have tweets rolling out because the go. The, what do you got, Chris? No, 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 nothing, nothing special. Just like it's starting to, it's underway right now. What are they talking about? Um, from what you can see. So this is just from Ryan Batty. He's here. Yeah, he, uh, he said he screwed up picking a seat. Uh, <laughs> Nicholson did. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Nicholson did. rolled in. He's like, and he wow, was I didn't so, even bring a chair. He was so hung over from his uh, like post game last night that he, he said he got a, a lunch and a free puck. So things are going well. Ryan Batty actually had a, uh, a really funny tweet yesterday um, talking about how only the Oilers could hold a season ticket event to try and appease the fan base and try to smooth things over with the season ticket holders only to make themselves look like bigger assholes. Mm hmm. It's pretty incredible. It's almost impressive. Well, that's the thing with them. And this is why, this is what the issue is. The issue isn't reader. The issue isn't 12 goals. The issue is that whenever you trot these guys out, they fuck up. And why do they fuck up is because they're not good. They're not good executives. They're not, I mean, there's a reason the organization is poor. I think it's just, a, it's a, it's another brick in the wall of, uh, like you said, Cam, it's, it's a, the positive you can take away from it is it's just another, it's another peak at the other side of the curtain. And you can see that the the idiots are running the asylum over there. Well, I don't know why we can sit here and like, yes, he should never have said that. But the dude's got a resume. The dude's done some shit before in, the in NHL? his career. No, what, hockey, 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 yeah, he got to, hockey he, Canada. He gets to go make sure that Team Canada's logo is on fucking Gatorade bottles. And he gets to pick which players on Team Canada's taxi no, roster. He doesn't oh, even cool. Do is that. Claude Giroux going to be on our taxi roster? That. Or is it going to be doesn't Matt even do Duchesne? That. He, doesn't he has even no do NHL that. success. He's a PR guy. That's fine. And he's not even good at that. He's not supposed to be in charge he is of hockey overseeing relations. the he's, fucking shitfall he's not of Connor McDavid's career. He's not supposed to be in heart. He's in overseeing it. He's not and allowing it. He's and not rubber stamping it. He's not supposed to be. He what he his biggest mistake was not bringing in a president, a poho, and a GM separately. 
No, he brought he brought in the one guy to run both, and that he guy brought was in a one of his buddies ball. from Hockey Canada, and that's what he's going to do again. He's going to pick some other Hockey Canada guy that's okay with Keith Gretzky. See, being it's just the GM. way too easy to be negative. It's far too easy to be negative these days, and we're just going to jump on like that. What, where, what basis do we have that he's going to bring? Thirteen in? years, we have not been in the playoffs. We I are agree. entitled to I be agree. fucking. I agree. Have angst against agree, this fucking organization. If we're, if, if we're just talking Nicholson. He's only been here for three or four. He's had Connor McDavid for his whole fucking career, and we are the shittiest fucking team in the league. And he put he put uh, Chirelli in charge and let him Wrong. run. Yeah, bad yeah. With, with no due no diligence. No Good interview. executive decision. That was definitely Didn't even a, look at a resume. That was definitely as a whole That's fucking business one hundred and one. They definitely had to bring in a fucking responsible hockey guy because they knew a guy who that just put fucking Boston and fucking Capel. Let's bring and him I agree, over here. And I agree with you. And, and I agree, and I agree, I agree with money. that. I agree with that. They should have had a guy running the hockey ops because that's not. I don't even think that's what Bob wants to do. He doesn't even want to be running that. He's but fucking. Shouldn't he's, Bob know I, what Bob wants and doesn't want, and then hire accordingly? Yes. He's got a yes. fucking infinite bank account. <laughs> infinite yep. bank account to spend with. Yep. Right. Yep. And so he, he makes that decision. He has to fucking own that. 100%. And this is the fucking hell we're in. 100%. And then he goes to fans 100%. and says this shit. I agree with you. He should, they should, all should have just manned up, said, you know what? It was on us. We're going to go fucking fix this shit and walk away and stop doing these things because all they do is keep putting their fucking foot in their mouth. And I agree with you 100%. But if we're going to sit here and just take dumps on one person specifically because of fucking. We're entitled to do that now. Because it's not the fucking player's fault that the team sucks. It's the fucking management above it. I agree. That's fucking making this shit show happen. I agree. And it's also fucking trickling down the toxicity that is the bad culture that we have in the room. That was clearly represented yesterday by those comments. Shouldn't we give him at least a second chance? It's Look like he's on he, his fifth chance. No, he's not. He hasn't brought in another fucking GM yet. Oh, my or God. Poho. Yes, he needs to fucking fix this because he screwed up right off the hop. He should have fired Shirelli two years ago. I agree with you. So that's a mistake. A hundred percent. Then he let it happen. Then he said he then he then he said he was responsible for signing Koskinen. Then said he that wasn't. Was, okay, yeah, I agree. And then with he you. let fucking Shirelli trade Manning for that, or for Manning with for Cthulhu. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That I don't. That's like we're on like chance thirty eight. There's no way that fucking uh, that uh, fucking Shirelli had to go through anyone to make trades. No chance. Well, Bobby went publicly and said it was all committee. Yeah, he goes publicly and said and talks shit. I don't believe a that was fucking. The ultimate time I don't, to fucking skewer I don't Shirley. believe a fucking word they say ever. Well, there you I go. So actions. that needs to be fixed. I want to see action. We are getting told lies, and then when I've, we get told the truth, it's I've, horrific. I've stopped listening. I've stopped listening. They've tuned I us out. See, They've lost no, us. I've, Look at us, Rick. I've, we love this fucking I've, team. <laughs> We're yelling at each other. I have. I have tuned them out. I don't care what the fuck they say anymore. Now it's about going out and doing something and just actions. I don't give a fuck what they say anymore. Actions, actions, actions. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Actions. But this Shut shitstorm they've created is going to make it difficult to pull all of these actions you were so. saying. I don't think it's going to be that hard. Of course it is. No. No GM wants to come in into Jerry this organization under this fucking structure. Yes, but you can come in and you can fucking fix shit. If, if it's clean house and yeah, full. Like, you can I, fix I, shit. Fully like I, this is my organization. When they bring, I don't have this bullshit when around me. When they bring me, in sure. a poho and a GM, those guys are going to be in charge of shit. And then they're gonna cut, they're gonna get the fucking go ahead. This is your guys' team. This is your guys' fucking go at it. Bobby's just Nixon's like fucking Trelly did. Hockey Canada was to make sure the Hockey Canada logo appears on a fucking Snickers I'm bar. I'm fairly certain there's more That's to it than his that. Fucking, but he's a brand guy. Yes, he's a brand yep. guy. I agree with you. He's a business guy. I agree with but you. Can't handle pressure apparently. Well, yeah. So I why agree would you? But he still understands <laughs> what a business and what a good product is. Yeah, he should never have been even running these things. That's, that should have been his fucking poho doing this because his GM was horrible. So mistake after mistake after mistake. But I think he gets one fucking chance to fucking fix this. I'm giving... Ugh. I'm going to give Rick a lot of credit to have a lot of faith I in this organization. I, I respect Rick so much for this. There's no, I'm assuming this is probably good hope, content, but hope. I know he's genuinely Where's, fucking coming at me like I this. I absolutely hate where we are as an organization, but I think we jump on way too much bullshit. Like we sit there and not this per se, but we just, we pile on, pile on, pile on. I thought this is 2019. There's not supposed to be any fucking bullying anymore. We're Twitter turns into a two man. No, 12 I don't. 12 out of 13 years. I agree. We're allowed to be upset. But it's not, it's not just. because of social media, we're allowed this. to voice that. It's not just this. And then, it's, and then we but go. But we're always and we right fucking, about, we're mostly right about stuff. 
Like I, I go on Twitter oh, and I can only talk like we, yeah. Like pe- people, sh- when they traded for Griffin Reinhardt, we were like, what the fuck are you doing? This is old boys nonsense. And people are like, stop being negative. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, oh, they traded Taylor Hall. No, don't do that. And it's like, stop being negative, blah, blah, blah. Every time we get told stop being negative, we are right. J- Jay is so fired up that he just literally left the room. Just, just Jay up just got up and left. Wow. And boys, God, it's hot in here. There's another angle on this too. There's a, a an entirely different angle on this that we haven't even touched yet. This morning, OilersNation.com, Dustin Nielsen wrote an article where he says from a very good source that the IIHF president, Rene Fassell, will be retiring in the spring of 2020 and that Bob Nicholson will be at the head of the list to replace him as the head of the IIHF. Now, if this guy is leaving in a year, do you really entrust him with selecting the general manager of this team and the president of hockey operations if he's already looking ahead at a potential job in international hockey? Is this somebody that you really want doing it? What Dusty says is maybe Nicholson stays with the Oilers and everything out, works out just fine. But if he does leave for the IIHF and the Oilers' next GM is a failure, it'll be very easy to look back on this moment and realize that absolutely none of it made sense, just like usual. <laughs> That's the thing is that there's there's the track record. Like if 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 there had been you know if they were they had been in the playoffs you know six seven years out of ten they Kevin Lowe didn't come out and call us tier two fans and like X Y and Z then sure like we could give them the benefit of the doubt but no you can't. It's hard to give them the benefit of the doubt because I agree with what Rick's saying. Words are words don't mean shit. Talk is cheap, motherfucker. Believe none of what you see and but what none I, of what you hear. But what I'm concerned with is the actions that we've seen for a decade plus have matched up with the stupidity that have come out of come out of the mouths of these people. That's the problem I have. It's like, yeah, Rick's 100 percent right. At the end of the day. These season ticket holder meetings are going to get everybody riled up. It's great for the page views. So good. Loving them page views. But they need to walk the walk. And the problem I have is they've been stumbling all over that block just like we all were in Las Vegas. They can't keep that shit on the rails. They just can't. And it's hard for me as an Oilers fan since I'm a kid to look at this and be like, well, this is fine. This is fine. Just to put a cap on it because it just came across the wire from Rashog. Go ahead. A uh, reader just spoke as to what, or as to the comments. What do you say? He said, you kind of can't believe it. I feel like it's disappointing and I'm offended by it. I'm the first one to admit I haven't had a good year. It went a little too far and Bob knows that. I thought the timing was a bit weird. We're fighting. We're still fighting for the playoffs. I'm still going to do my best. He also commented on what his teammates thought. And he said, we talked before the game and they don't think it was right either. It's good to know they have my back. That's what I'm talking about, man. Culture, the problem with culture is the guys in the suits with the nice shoes, as Rick said before before we started recording. The problem with the culture is the fuckwits that think that adding culture in the dressing room is going to fix the problem. You're the problem, man. You're the problem. Yeah, like is having, is having Matt Hendricks there going to stop Bob Nicholson from being a dipshit? Like, I guarantee you, everybody in that dressing room last night was like, man, what are we doing here? I guarantee it. There's no way that anybody's like, well, that was a normal thing for our CEO to say. It's just not. It's just The Oilers have a hard enough time drawing free agents in without having to break the bank and give them no move clauses and all this shit without the CEO of the company taking a shot at a guy who signed as a free agent last year. Toby Reader, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that it's Toby Reader. What matters is we need to sign free agents in the future. And if I'm a free agent, if I'm negotiating with my agent, is this the environment I want to come to? Where if I have, heaven forbid, I have a horrible year. This is the worst year by far of Toby Reader's career. It may even cause him to spend a year in the KHL. I don't think so. I think somebody's going to take a flyer on him. He's going to get 12 goals next year. But like... Why would you want to come here? Yeah, Connor's here. But like, what does Connor think about this? Oh, shit. I'm the captain of the team that's led by a bunch of dicks. We also, we're talking about second chances here in Bob Nicholson. How many more McDavid chances do we get? How many? I want to believe that he's going to remain loyal and finish off his contract here. 
I think he's a he's a good stand up guy who believes that his legacy is attached to success here because it is. Like we talked about with LeBron James podcast a few weeks ago, you know, championships in Miami don't mean as much. Championships for McDavid in New York, Toronto, whatever, wouldn't mean as much as it would here. But I mean, if 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 Nicholson goes ahead and hires some placeholder poho from Hockey Canada and Keith Gretzky comes in and the team's flat again, does he sit through it again? Connor McDavid is in the fourth year of his NHL career. It's a <clears> finite number of years, seasons, days, hours, minutes that he gets to play. That career could end at any moment, too. It could end. Injuries happen. There's a lot of shit that could happen. Knock on wood. I hope Connor plays until he's 65. The point being, he's looking at this like, fuck. Fuck. How could you not? We said it upstairs. If our Nation Network CEO took a shot at Evan the intern, for getting our accounts locked in public, blaming one specific person, it would be Bush League. It would be a trash move. In any other industry, it would be a trash move. And the fact that it's the Oilers is just not surprising. It's a bummer. I hate to see it. I wish this didn't happen. And quite frankly, the Oilers should not let Bob Nicholson speak in front of a microphone ever again until he gets some training of some kind. You know what? Whoever trained Sid and Connor when they were like 12 years, 12 years old to talk to the media, the Oilers need to bring that guy in to talk to Bob Nicholson. Or he's like, bro, you suck at this. Connor McDavid should just be speaking on behalf of the organization. No. I, no. I, I don't want Connor dealing with more shit than he already has no. to. The fact that he's lumped into this as the team's captain, and you know today, probably after practice, somebody's going to ask him about it. And the fact that he's going to have to answer to this, he's going to do... Like, you know, next time he goes to Toronto or something in the off season, they're like, hey, uh, what about Bob Nicholson a little while ago shitting on a free agent signing that you guys did last season? What do you think about that? And Connor's going to be like, oh, great. Here we go again. I'm just here to pump bio steel or whatever. It's ridiculous. It's, it's garbage. It's a garbage move by a trash organization. We've got a couple updates from Ryan Batty, who is live tweeting. The, Chris, what do you got? The last one. He said uh, the first discussion was about the ice district. Um, parking was the very first thing mentioned. Ryan, what do you got any updates on parking? Uh, no. Ryan Batty just said that was the first eye roll of the eye roll of the event. Um, he said that they uh, updated on the construction of the plaza in the ice district, and they said uh, the, the plaza will be open for the Oilers' 2020 playoff run. Oh God! Another okay. eye roll adds Batty. Well, I mean, just look at the video that I talked about a little bit earlier that went up on the Oilers official Twitter account where they're posting crowd shots from these season ticket holder meetings. The enthusiasm in that crowd camp. Whew, yep. All you can see is a bunch of people bursting with excitement. I don't know, boys. I, I think we've said it all. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say about it. I mean, at the end of the day, he fucked up. And everybody knows he fucked up. And where your level of rage goes, whether you think Toby Reader got treated unfairly or just the bigger point of you shouldn't take public shots at your own assets, it doesn't matter because what happened happened and now we need to figure out how to move on from it. I think my favorite part of the day, though, is TSN, the insiders, they had a little segment about it where Darren Dreger was explaining, oh, Bob Nicholson called Toby Reader and apparently they laughed about it. And then... Uh, and then Dreger ended with, and Bob hopes we can all move on from here. And James Duthie goes, in Edmonton? And he cracks up laughing. Classic. <laughs> I think that was one of my favorite parts about it. At least the jokes were good. If we're looking for positives to oh, end this man. on. Oh, man. The content was so The good. jokes were great. That's the best. The best thing ever is when the Oilers toss us a nugget and we, uh, we take it all the way. The, yesterday the was more than a nugget. That was a gold mine they threw at us at least we can all agree that oilers fans are extremely passionate and although it's uh not fun to be an oilers fan right now we can all bond over this i want to end this podcast we've got a little over 15 minutes left i want to end on a positive note i want to end with some fun everybody in this here room just last weekend went down to beautiful las vegas nevada we had a big big time and that no. is brought to you. No. Oh, come on. 
I was, I was working through it, Dan. It's good. I was working it's through good. it. I just I was you're digging you a, a hole here, man. Yes. You got me digging a hole here, just like you could do with our friends out at Java Machinery. <laughs> you need a front wow. end loader? You go out and get one. You want to rent something? Go and get one. You need some service? Head out to Japa. You need information? You go to javamachinery.com. You rent the 653 loader and the B-52s and the Love you Shack. You rent a B-52. <laughs> That's a Love Shack. Java Machinery, they have it all. Sales, service, everything you need. Get yourself out of this hole with our friends at Japa. Or you could do what we do and just crush it. Hey, eh? Rent a big old machine, crush a barrel something. Maybe uh, Bobby next will head over to Japa and dig himself a hole. He's done a very good job of digging a hole, though our friends at Japa could have made it more efficient, I'm sure. Now, on Friday, thanks to our friends at Flair Airlines, we made our way down to Las Vegas. Wow. What a weekend. That was a shift, boys. I think everybody came back with the various ailments, uh, general dehydration, tiredness, there's some sickness going on. When you sleep for about eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours over the course of a weekend, that's bound to happen. Chris, I want to start with you. This was your first time in Las Vegas. What do you think? It's a very cool city. And I know you guys were like hyping it up and saying, oh man, your face is going to be wide eyed, jaw dropped. But that was legit me walking down the strip for the first time. So super cool place. The weather was awesome. The people were awesome. I, uh, it's funny, Vegas is interesting. We go there three nights and like that's a perfect amount. But at the same time, you need to go back immediately because there's so much stuff going around the city. Uh, like I'm excited to go back again and 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 go see Britney, maybe. See Britney, see uh Little see Celine. The Backstreet Boys. See Celine's, all the see all the people. Celine's wrapping her up. Yeah, you gotta go to Quake if you want to see Celine. She wraps up this year. I don't care about her. No, oh, come on, man. Wow. She's a queen. She's a queen. Um <laughs> It was all all around. It was just an incredible weekend. One of the in, one of the weirder slash what happened? <laughs> Things happened to all of us on Thursday night as we're getting ready for the Vegas trip. We're all checking in on each other. Hey, you got your passport. Hey, you got all this. You got this. And then what we notice Thursday night is that Oilers Nation's Twitter account randomly got suspended right on the eve of a trip to Vegas where we're going to be posting all kinds of pictures. We went from 50,000 followers to zero, just like that. All of us were very confused. Uh, Twitter gave no indication of why. I have filed multiple appeals now, still haven't heard back a lick from them. So what do we do, boys? We pivoted. To video. We pivoted to video and to Oilers Nation 6 and Oilers Nation 12. And those got locked because Evan's 12. And then we got that back. Evan, to be fair to Evan, props to him. When we were in Vegas, he sat on hold with Twitter support for a 72-hour block straight. He didn't leave the room. Uh, I respect that. He, um, he really wanted to get our Twitter account back. He, he wanted to enjoy Vegas. He was a little scared, a little nervous. The lights were really bright. But he stayed in the room the whole time and just sat on the, sat on the phone, sat on, on hold and just listened to the elevator music and tried to get us back. You, you, can, some- you can verify this by looking at the video that Evan uh, put together and clipped. He was not in one shot. He was not in one of the shots. It's true. There you go. I I just think the reason I brought up the Twitter account before getting into the Vegas recap is I think it's incredible the community that Oilers Nation has, the citizens of Oilers Nation, the fact that we went from zero up to 2,400 followers or something like that, got locked again, rebuilt a third time. Now we're at, what, Evan, 3,600, somewhere around there? Somewhere in there from zero to... It's incredible. The support we got, the fact that everybody's having fun with it, using the Free Oilers Nation hashtag. I was, I was honestly worried. I was worried Friday morning when we still weren't unlocked that we had work to do via social. Yeah, we still have Facebook. Yeah, we still have Instagram. But we always have used Twitter kind of a... It's our heartbeat. It's kind of, like Cam said, it's the heartbeat of what we do. We want to make sure that everybody was in the loop, always in the know. And the community just kind of stepped up and made it possible to do that again. And it's pretty incredible. So to whoever is trying to bring us down, you cannot. We will rise from the ashes like a phoenix. Bad boys for life. The amount of people tweeting at Twitter, like complaining. Yeah, there was a lot, great. Of, a lot of fans shooketh that we were, uh, that we were taken down and that's, and that's greatly appreciated. But it, but it kind of, and it, it kind of brings us back to the, uh, to the Vegas trip too, because I think one of the, the most important things was we had, we had 20 fans with us on our trip with Flair. 
And then the and then what happened? And then the Oiler fans, uh, the Oiler fans that were already there in Vegas, just showed up on mass, and and it's such a it's such a cool such a cool fan base that we're all a part of. And you know, I mean, we're just uh, we're just a, a fan blog for people to come talk and and listen to. Um, but it's just it's a, such a neat group of people to interact with. On Saturday night, Dan had organized that we showed up to a bar at uh, Park MGM called Moneyline. And when we went in there, we didn't really know what to expect. And it was just interesting having people come in because they saw we were there. Uh, Jay told a story a little... Uh, we were just talking in the office, and Jay told a story of some a couple of women from Northwest Territories that showed up at the bar because they saw we were there. There was just random groups that weren't even involved in our trip that saw we were there, so they wanted to make their way down. You had your weight purchased for you in shots. That was weird. It was weird because one of the weird things for me is when I get into the mix... And I have a couple of cocktails. The anonymity kind of fades away. And they're like, hey, man, let's do a shot. Let's do a shot. And eventually got to the point where I had to turn down shots from people because I was just, I was buckled. You uh, produced a intense vomit oh. that you wore on your pants oh. for the rest of the evening. So that was Sunday. So Sunday, the day that we actually went to the Golden Knights game. It was on the back of your pants. How'd that happen? I don't know, man. Fountain. <laughs> Fountain, <laughs> rolled in it. I don't know. I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. Splashback. But anyway, so let's start with Sunday morning. So for this whole trip, Rick brought the terrible idea that you had to have one shot before 10 a.m. or 10 shots before 1 p.m., which obviously the math works very quickly in favor of having one before 10 a.m. But when you're out until 3 or 4 in the morning the night before, getting up to pound that shot is... Not good. It's uh, it's significantly easier to wake up and pound a pre ten a.m. shot when you're room when you're rooming with someone who at eight a.m. will start playing music from the Lion King. Chris, what's that about? It's just a thing I do, and it's super cool. Like when you start waking up to to the Lion King music, you will realize how cool it is and how enlightening it is. At one point, um, Cam was lying in bed still, and I put on the tune. And I started to open the drapes really slowly as the natural sunlight shone into our room. And it was it was the most enjoyable thing ever. And if you if you disagree with me, then you suck. This was at 8 a.m. Cam, your thoughts on uh, this beautiful way to wake up? Yeah, I mean, I had my uh, <laughs> had my alarm set for like 945 because I was ready to wake up, have a quick shot and just like lay there because we we're going to catch a flight later. I don't want to be up at eight. I shared a room with Rick and he wakes up one morning and I'm furiously pounding on the laptop trying to knock the GDB out. And he's like, content don't stop or what? I'm like, buddy, we got 30 minutes to get downstairs and get a shot. Let's go. And that's just how it was the whole time from 10 a.m. until whenever you shut her down, you just give her. So on Sunday, we started at 10. Shots of fireball, Rick's birthday. hey yo, Hey-o. Hey-o. St. Patrick's Let's Day. Go. Let's go. Let's go. We toured the city, we had chiladas, we had beers, we had the twisted teas. We also had a couple people comment about us uh, walking around the streets with tall boys at 10.30 a.m. Yeah, like what are you? What kind of Vegas trip are you doing, bro? Can't have chilada, <laughs> tall boy chilada at 10 a.m.? Yep. What are you talking about? Well, it was St. Patrick's Day, too. Yeah, exactly. Come on. There was a, I mean, all weekend kind of we did it. But like from after we, we cruised around, went to P.F. Chang's, had probably the best Kung Pao shrimp I'll ever have in my life. And if I had those in my pocket right now, I would just take them out and enjoy them like a little squirrel because I was packing them away on my plate for the end of my it's meal. It's like Napoleon Dynamite style. Just have exactly. them shoved into your it's pocket. Very, very nice. <laughs> but when we finally started to head towards Beer House, that's when you really started to see how many Oilers fans were down there. You started to see what kind of numbers we were putting up. Not just for the nation trip itself where there was 20 of us. We were all there. Dan, what would you say? What was your, what would be your guess? I'd I'd say probably at four o'clock when we got there, there was probably a hundred, hundred and fifty Oiler fans there. And then by game time, we were sitting at like probably four hundred. They had 500. a bit of that, the uh, playoff feeling to it. Yeah, I know here at least when we get to the playoffs, the sun's out, there's snow is usually gone, so those those two get tied together. Just the Average energy coming from the city added to it. Everybody's on vacation, so that adds to it. Shout out to CVS for selling us Tall Boys for three dollars and seventy six cents. That was, that was incredible. That was absolutely incredible. 
Uh, yeah, and then you could take your take your beer into anywhere. I know I finish off mine at PF Chang's while uh, Coom ordered that bucket of what is it, seven or eight ounces in it? Something like that. Yeah, it tasted really nice though. It, it tasted great. real nice. <laughs> Rum punch. Back at Beer House, the energy was there. Everybody's excited, even though we had what I'm sure it was about a four percent chance of making the playoffs. But we were there for a game. We showed up in numbers. They had their showgirls marching up and down with some drummers. And we try and get in their faces, try and show them that we're bringing the heat instead of them. It's And it's something, too, that when uh, when the Squire showed up on the Flames broadcast and all that hoopla happened, they were they were kind of waxing poetic about how Flames fans really showed up for this game. And they showed eight of them. And one of them was the Squire. Uh, I don't think you could have even done that with the with the broadcast in Vegas with the Oiler fans because we we just it was half and half at least. One thing I want to talk about is that this was the first time I ever went to a game in Vegas. Man, Vegas knows how to do it. Obviously, it's Vegas. You expect that they put on a show, but holy shit, did the Golden Knights put on a production? It is it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. Yes, we have drummers here too. They cruise around with Hunter, <laughs> but. <laughs> it was it was unlike anything I've ever seen. It gets you hyped up and you're not a Golden Knights fan. It's I was all, so, so I was awesome. so jealous. So it's the third period, the others are losing. The Golden Knights are doing their entertainment thing, and every fan in the building is having the time of their lives, and I'm just sitting there like trying to enjoy how cool this experience is, but like it's not us and we're the ones losing. And then I know we have to go back to Rogers place and deal with their Isn't it just like a wet dream for people with ADD? Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest here. I don't know exactly what everybody else at this table remembers. <laughs> I know Bag Milk says it's a great inside there, and the, and and the production was insane. I've sat here since uh, since we got home, and I've tried to think about it. And there was the castle right up to our left. They had the drummers in there. They looked very happy. I started chirping them because, you know, the game wasn't out of control yet. We still had some opportunities in this. They started firing back. I was having a great time. Other than that, I have to honestly, I got, I got to be honest here. I don't really remember anything that was great that's production. The, well, that's, that's the le- what? That's also because you were sitting in a section that, free much beer? to the yeah, much to the disbelief of belief of everybody, they were giving out yeah, free beer to anybody that asked for it. Sir, I'll, I'll have the Bud Light. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Didn't crack it for I me. I think that explains where Only your memory went. time. Was the free beers getting tossed around? Yeah, but like, but well, like, I, I know Bag Milk was not in great shape near the end of that game. So this is where I wanted to call him out on what he remembers. I know that's we got down right after this game is when Towel Boy was getting his massive check, and I kind of had to steer Bag Milk to where we were going. Then he needed to sit down as we waited. We found the boys outside. I like I said, I don't know what everyone else remembers. I know I remember very little of it, other than there was a great time minus the loss. Um, yeah, a couple ladies in front of us who are Vegas fans. They were fun to go back and forth with. But yeah, I really want to know what everyone specifically so, remembers. I'll, I'll list off a couple things. And it's not so much the stuff that the Vegas, uh, what they do in the arena. It's, it's how their fans respond and just how big of a party it is. For example, f- first thing that comes to mind is the Freddie Mercury chant in the third period. They're doing the Queen thing where, you, where the crowd repeats what Freddie Mercury sings. You don't remember that? I have it on video. I'll show you. It was the coolest. It was the coolest thing ever, and everybody in the arena was into it. Okay, I'll. I'll it's. It, I'm, I post it on social media. They also they had this one thing going where they would do like yell if you're in this section, this section, and they got yell if you're a tourist, yell if you're a local, and they had that going back and forth. Yeah. So they were starting beef between males, tourists and locals. Males, females, yeah, people. that was cool. The Oilers do a version of that, but it's not as good. T-shirt Another thing I love toss. about it is the the Golden Knights goal song and their their goal celebration they they have the beat where the chance the the crowd chants go knights go to the music and that's just something so easy that everyone in the building can get involved with one thing that i would like to mention is that everybody's game day experience was very different (laughs) because i would say what jared probably five ten minutes into the first period you and i were eyeballing up that penthouse bar Jared and I were eyeing up this bar at the top of the arena, and we're like, oh, I wonder what's going on up there. We should probably try to get up there. So we did, and we tried to conquer. However, we weren't allowed in the private parties. We didn't have the right wristbands. We were like, okay, well, at least we tried. What else you got? Made our way down to the suite level. 
breezed right through security in there like we own the place. Started crushing some, uh, some old fashions in Manhattans. I was not enjoying those. I had never had one before, so Jared's like, let's do it. Had ourselves some cookies, probably the worst cookies I've ever had in my life. What was the party? What was the occasion? Uh, I don't know. They wouldn't even tell us. They oh. wouldn't even let us pass the velvet rope. However, once you get to the suite level in the T-Mobile arena, that's where things really open up for you. If you get past that security, it's like they're like, oh, you're already in here. You're allowed to do whatever you want. So Jared and I pop in this random elevator, go downstairs to what seems to be a bumping party in the Jack Daniels lounge. We are looking around and I'm wearing my nudes jersey. Jared's wearing a green Oilers t-shirt because it's, it's St. Patrick's Day. And we're looking around and we're like, huh, not a lot of Oilers fans in here, huh? And then we look out. We look out of the Jack Daniels lounge and there's Chris and Evan and they see us. They spot us. They're like, oh. So Chris tries to wheel through security. He's like, I got a wristband on. They're like, no, kick rocks. Please, but my friends are in there. So me and Jared are like, well, uh-uh. So we just turn around and leave. So we were really going to let Chris rain on our parade. From there, there was a luxury suite. We were just kind of hanging out near it. Door opens. Somebody slides out. Your boy Bag Milk slides right in like a phantom in the night. <laughs> we're looking around. We grab a couple of beers. Guys, why wouldn't you? All of a sudden, Jared's like, mm, I don't know if we should be in here. Seems like this is an 11-year-old's birthday party. There are a lot of Oilers fans, though, so we thought we were at home. We thought we were on our home court. Turns out probably not. We were getting eyed up by a grandma. Yeah. Grandma wasn't sure that we were part of the club. She didn't care. She didn't, I mean, she, she didn't care, though. She, she <laughs> so, so we made our way out of there. Went back up to the party lounge. I had a couple of extra hot dogs, thinking that that was going to sort me out. <laughs> However, it did not. By the time we left T-Mobile Arena, I am on tilt. Don't really remember how we got back to the hotel. All I remember is laying on the bed. And you, you guys were like, are you coming? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just need a minute. Just need a minute. You're like, you're not coming out. That's what Chris said. I think the rest of us believed in you. No, uh, yeah, I uh, admittedly I was wrong. I thought when Bag Milk said he needed thirty minutes, I was like, "That's it, that's the line." Like you're not bouncing back after that. And no, he it, did. He... yeah, and some you just got to puke and rally. There's nothing wrong with a power nap either. No, there's no power nap. In fact, I, like I was trying to piece it together, I vomited like <laughs> probably my weight worth. It was like powerful too. A lot it was, of like, PF those... Changs coming out. No, man, this wasn't the P.F. Chang's. This was probably the 12 hot dogs I ate with all that greasy nacho sauce. There was at one point, I just had a plate full of the nacho sauce and I'm just dipping chips oh, in man. it. I don't, like right out of the bowl too. Like the I was key just was, an animal. The key was getting the mac and cheese they had and putting the nacho sauce on that. I was doing that on top of the hot dogs. I was just a mess. So the fact that I made it back out to the craps tables, that's all doing all right. Another miracle that happened that night, this is very specific to mine and Rick's room, was that I made it back to the room before he did. And I guess when I got in there, I don't remember this at all. I latched the door. <laughs> I came back because, yeah, we left the craps table. We had a really good run out there. I got to say uh, thanks to Jared for that. He probably what was a 10, 12, 15 in a row. Uh, we'll try and get some video of the. Uh, of what the squire was doing in order to roll before he'd roll it. He had a bit of a, a uh, bit of a system and uh pit boss was not happy with it. So she shut him down twice on both of his systems. He wasn't, he wasn't having it. Walked away with a couple of bucks, decided, you know what? It's time to go upstairs, but I want a pizza. So I walked around the hotel a bit, walked upstairs to the food court, nothing up there. Came back downstairs, hit a Baja fresh, got myself a quesadilla and then chips and guac proceeded up to my room Open the door and yeah, no, that latch was locked. Okay, that's fair. I got some food here anyways. I'm going to sit down and eat the rest of my food in the hallway. Left it there. Then I proceeded to try and get in again. Tried to just like slide my finger through the little, lat the little hole in the door there to see if I can't push it off. I was having none of that. Started, hey, hey, uh, hey, bag milk, can you help me out here? I need to get in. Need to get in. Nothing. Nothing. What am I going to do here? Well, I know uh, I know the young guys are just two doors down, but we, I'm going to give them a call first. I called them once nothing okay it's always a second call that gets them second call this is where the shit gets really weird second call he wakes up about halfway through it and it's very very sober very fresh hey my, hey uh bag milk can you let me in yeah rick no problem i'll come opens the door i walk in lights are on 
All he does is plops back down on the bed and starts pl uh, plucking away at the computer. Pretty much what he was doing before I walked in, I'm, I'm guessing. Fresh as a daisy. No remnants of nothing. Doesn't look horribly loaded. Saw him like an hour ago. Nothing like that anymore. Just plays on the computer. I walk in, have a quick, uh, quick peek, come back out. Dead. Computer's gone. Dead on the dead, dead, dead. Probably couldn't wake him if I tried. Killed the lights, shut her down, said, hey, the man had a good night. Let him have some rest now. Basically, what we're saying is uh, we put in a shift. <laughs> we put in a shift. Another honorable mention has to go to the pool party we threw for ourselves. The Cabana Boys rented a cabana. Excalibur party or Excalibur pool. Brooke was our host. She was wonderful. Shout out to Brooke. Shout out to Brooke. I have to give uh, the boys from Utah a little love, too. Yep. Baby, uh, Lil Bro and Goat came bearing gifts as they always do, came bearing booze. They were great. Unbelievable. Like the people that come on the trip is what make these events what they are. And I just want to thank everybody that not only came with us and with Flair Airlines, but for everybody that met us down there. And the last thing I really want to mention about Pool Party Day is when Evan tried to convince us that he wasn't going to go to sleep and that he would be up for the next 48 consecutive hours. Yeah. Fast forward two or three hours in the future, first period of the Game Against Arizona on Saturday, Evan had to go for a little napski. He just, he, he just, he, he just, claims he went on a spirit quest throughout like Vegas, something. but he but went to no bed. Yeah, his spirit quest really meant head down on a bed, having a little napper. And then we decided to go to Fremont that night, probably, I don't know, after the game was over, probably around 11 o'clock. Evan popped right up, came with us to Fremont Street. We are watching a killer cover band, ridiculous cover band. All of a sudden, Evan in the group text, just like, gotta go. And we just turned around. We're like, where'd Evan go? I don't know. He didn't say anything to any of us in person. It was in the group chat and he was, oh, he said something. In and out. <laughs> in and out. Evan's first experience in Vegas. Sometimes you hit her hard. Sometimes you hit her hard. Uh, Chris also was taking little nap skis in the first period, kind of melting into his seat. Into me. I got, I got some pictures there. Yeah. He was having some cuddles with Dan. That was really nice. I didn't take any naps. Like, I watched the whole game. I just Your eyes to, were rolling. Back I needed to rest far. my head. I don't think I watched any of that Coyotes game at all. I don't remember it. Uh, Cam and Jared were in the booth next to us. So they, were, uh, they were doing some hypotheticals. Yeah, I was asking Jared hypotheticals. And uh, all in all, amazing weekend. Can't wait for the next one. Nobody came back injured. We all came back safe. The wallets maybe took a little bit of a beating. Maybe the pride took a little bit of a beating. But all in all, that's fine. That is a success successful trip to Las Vegas. And like Dan just said, I cannot wait for the next time we do this. Nor can I wait for a two weeks time when we go down to Calgary to shut out the season. Tickets are available for that on Backside Tours website. If you are in Calgary, we now have a link up so you can just get tickets to join us in Calgary. We've got a whole itinerary set up. It's going to be a hell of a weekend. We're rehydrating now, flushing the kidneys. We're charging up. We're preparing. ready. Here's our livers crying. Looking forward Let's to go. another big weekend. I want to thank Sherwood Ford the Giant, Hog Deodorizer, and Japa Machinery for making all of this happen. I want to thank everybody here for a great weekend, sticking up for each other, just being part of a great scene that we've got going on at Oilers Nation. Thank you to everybody that came to Las Vegas. Thank you to everybody that listens to this. We wrote See you in Calgary. Best wishes. <laughs>